In which anatomical plane does lordosis occur? So you need to know two things to answer this. A, your anatomical planes, and you also need to know your what lordosis is. So in which anatomical plane does lordosis occur? Is it A, frontal, B, transverse, C, sagittal, or D, coronal? So is it A, frontal, B, transverse, C, sagittal, or D, coronal? Now, you might be able to exclude some straight away, but let's get that answer in. Let's get it moving. In which anatomical plane does lordosis occur? Right, I'm going to start explaining it, and I'm going to look forward to seeing some answers in there really shortly. So, in which anatomical plane does lordosis occur? So, first off, you need to know what lordosis is and what's happening with lordosis. So, lordosis is essentially this motion. So, like a duck's bum motion, whereby they have this forward movement of the pelvis. So, if you put your hands on the bony bit in front, and then... <laughs> Fantastic. Ugh, see, okay, nice, nice guess, Jackie. Okay, so from here, push your front um, two fingers forwards and your hit and your thumbs upwards, so that you get this like overarching in the back. Now, what action is that of your back? Action of uh, sorry, ex hyperextension of the spine. So you're in hyperextension of the spine, and at the same time, you get a little bit of flexion in the hip. They're the two joint actions that are happening in lordosis, okay? Now, there's two ways you can look at this. You can either go through the joint action process of finding out about lordosis, or you can do what does it look like and where would you look at it from? So let's go for the first one. First one is joint action. You know that it's got hyperextension and of the spine and flexion of the hip, just slightly. So if you've got flexion of the hip, and hyperextension and you know that only flexion and extension only happen in the sagittal plane you would have put c which is exactly what you did jackie which is awesome and that is correct c sagittal the other way of remembering it which i really like because i'm a simple person i like simple things um is what so what did I do instantly? If I wanted to show you lordosis, I showed you it from the side of my body because you can't really see it from the front. You can't really see it from above or from below. So you had to look at it from the side of the body. Now, the way to remember these, I've done this before on a Facebook Live, but, you know, always good to go through it. Yeah, you got it. Like Lord with a big belly sitting in a chair, Lordosis. Hey, lovely Kelly, I love that. Okay, so <laughs> nice way of remembering it. Um, so if they're sitting in a chair, they've got flexed, um, flexed hip flexors, flexed uh, at the hips, which means that they are in sagittal. So way to remember. with an X. I love that move that plane at all. Our best to look at are you the most joint movement when you look at them from the side. So for example, one exercise might be a bicep curl. To see the most the joint move the most, I don't want to look at it from the front, I can't really see it. Can't look at it from the top, but I can look at it from the side. It's a sagittal movement that involves flexion and extension. Looking good, hey? So, um, sagittal is from the side. Does that make sense, Jackie? This is clearing up the planes of motion. Um, and then we've got transverse. Transverse is from the top. And this one's definitely the hardest to remember. But top, and it also is responsible for a lot of twisting actions as well. So a good way of remembering it is twisting. Um, but top example is pec fly. Let's look at pec fly for a transverse action. It's horizontal flexion extension. It's also rotation stuff. So if you've got this horizontal flexion and uh, sorry, horizontal extension, horizontal flexion, like doing a pec fly, where do I see the most amount of joints? Not from the front and not from the side. 
but from the top so if i if i'm laying down doing pet fly it's better that i um get my trainer to literally look at the whole motion from the side and that is how you know that it's a transverse action because you can see it from the top and predictably a frontal is going to be from the front so a frontal exercise for example would be something in the frontal plane give me something in the frontal plane shoulder press so shoulder press up this way and similarly obviously you've got lat pull down so if you've got shoulder press um what way round would you view it would you view it from the front or would you could you view it from the side or is it better to view it from the top well it's going to be from the front and from the back isn't it you might say back but there isn't one with a B, so we're safe. Front and back. Um, so front and back allows you to see that shoulder press lat pull down motion much better. Lateral raise, another one on there. Um, lateral lunge off to the side. So I hope that works for remembering your planes of motion. Frontal, transverse, sagittal, use the first letter to, and think about the action that you're doing. Now, lordosis, same motion, it's, um, it's here. Whereas if I said scoliosis so this is for everybody watching scoliosis so think about what is that posture almost go away then what is that postural compensation what's happening in the spine is that frontal transverse or sagittal leave coronal was an option that wasn't an option it's, it's a, a red herring so does scoliosis occur in the frontal transverse or sagittal plane now you can use i've you can use this motion to find that out we're upside down <laughs> um so use this to help scoliosis that's a postural compensation but what plane of movement does that occur in is it frontal could you see the most of that scoliosis the first off what is scoliosis could you see most of it from the front? Most of it. Jackie, you are on it. Perfect. So frontal, because it's doing this up the spine, in line with where I am. Um, it's this S and C curve, or so either a C shape or an S shape, and you would see it better and the most amount of movement from the front or from the back. Jackie, you've got it. So, um, you guys have been amazing today, so I want to give you something. This little gift that I'm giving you, and this is going to go on the YouTube as well, is essentially the very first module of our Revision Mastery Series, Level 3 for Anatomy and Physiology. You get 53 minutes off the top of my head, 53 minutes of... Um, of absolute content that we cover for the heart and circulatory system this is everything you need to know about heart and circulatory system in the preparation for your exam it comes from our revision mastery it's totally exclusive you also when you scroll underneath it you've got you don't even need to put your email address in for it it's there you got it straight away um you've got a cheat sheet that will help you and you also can download it to um, mp3 as well which is an audio file so you can listen to it on the go then if you look underneath that you'll see that there is also an offer on there for the full revision mastery series but the reason why I'm giving it to you is so that you can use it so use that link um, to get that actual um, module heart and circulatory system everything you need to know for level three